Hello everybody, welcome to Letters from Jen. Today we're going to carry on learning how we can overcome. And a good way to do that is to be able to see our outcome. Let's get right into the Word of God together. Now from the previous letters, we've come to understand the powerful spiritual force of joy and its ability to cause us to overcome the difficulties that we face in life. But today we're going to look at how our attitude to God's Word actually activates the spiritual force of joy and it releases it to go to work in our lives. Now in the book of James, we were told to consider it joy when going through trials. In other words, we are supposed to have a predetermined resolve to have an attitude of joy even before trouble comes. And then we're supposed to maintain that choice of attitude through the storm until we carried on joy through to victory. Now thankfully, James tells us how we can actually do this <laughs> and he tells us in the very next verse. Let's see what he says in James chapter 1 verse 3. He says, be assured and understand that the trial and proving your faith brings out endurance and steadfastness and patience. Now James explains that if we find ourselves fallen headfirst into trouble that has us surrounded on every side with trials that are really too difficult for us to bear alone, there is a sure hope. In spite of how difficult or hopeless it may seem, if you are a child of God, there is more than just light at the end of the tunnel. There is a glorious victory waiting for you. Now, if you just do things God's way, then you will find that this trial will test and prove your faith to be more than equal to the opposition that's piled up against you. And this journey is going to produce qualities in you that you never even dreamed were possible. They're qualities that actually cause you to stand strong and true and undefeated no matter what comes against you. James actually calls these qualities endurance, steadfastness, and patience. Now, James begins verse 3 by telling us to be assured and understand that this is exactly what is going to happen. In other words, the truth that your trial will not defeat you, but rather improve you, is what you have to keep in the foremost of your mind at all all times. So in other words, we need to get to the place that even before our trial comes, even before the storm comes, and we know Jesus said they're going to come. So even before trouble comes, we've made a predestined resolve or predetermined resolve that we will have an attitude of joy. And then when the trial comes, do you know what brings that joy? Is that we have chosen to believe that no matter what we go through, it will not defeat us, but it'll actually prove exactly what we stand for. It will prove our faith. And in that process, while we stand strong in our faith, it's going to develop inside of us qualities that are precious and good and qualities that are like gold to us. So we end up coming out on the other side, not damaged, not defeated, but rather victorious overcomers with qualities of gold, mature in God, completely strong and undefeatable. Now that is pretty amazing, but we have to keep that end picture in the forefront, even before the storms come. So let me recap that again. It means that we must make a deliberate decision to actually shift our thoughts off of the reality of our troubles and to place our thoughts in a place where we understand and are completely assured that we will come through this ordeal on top. My granny would actually say, on top and with bells on. <laughs> in other words, no matter how bad it gets, if we hold on to what God's word says, we will walk right out of the trial far stronger and wiser and taller than we were before we even entered into it. Now, keeping our minds focused on that truth alone 
is going to cause that force of joy to begin to rise up from inside our spirits. Now James is actually telling us that we can either see what we are going through as an opportunity to have our faith proven and our lives improved with this excellence of qualities that's developed inside of us or we can see it as a time to become fearful and to give up and to fail. It really just depends on what we decide to keep our minds fixed on. It's a pretty strong word and I really hope that it's sinking deep into your spirits. But next week we're actually going to talk about those excellent qualities being formed in us and how they work together to see us overcome victoriously. But until then, I would love for you to practice keeping your mind focused on what the Word of God says that your outcome will be, instead of what those worrisome and fearful thoughts are shouting at you. You are going to be amazed at how you can train your mind to become fixed on the truth and as it does that, it will release that strong inner joy from your spirit and infuse you with great inner strength. Do you remember what we learned about in the last letter? That that force of joy is not something that is fleeting like happiness is. It doesn't come and then immediately go depending on what your circumstances are. Joy is rather than that little ripple that, that goes off on top of the surface of the water. It's strong at first and then it slowly but surely just fades away and you wouldn't have even dreamt that a ripple or that a stone was even thrown into that water. Joy is rather that underlying current that even though you can't see it, you know it is there. And if you are in that water, that current is so strong, it's going to pick you up and carry you through. That's exactly what joy is. The Spirit of God inside of you has the fruit of joy, which is His character. And as we said last week, that joy, it, it becomes the strongest and most apparent when the, we live in pressured times and when there's stressful times. And it's right there waiting for us to tap into it. But the only thing that's going to activate that joy and actually draw it up from the inside of us to give us strength, because it is our strength, the only thing that will do that is our minds. If we choose to focus our minds on what God said the end picture is. And what did He say? He said, this thing is not going to break you. This is not the end. This is only something that is there to test and prove that what you believe God says is true. And while you refuse to be shifted on that truth, you keep your mind on this that by the end of this trial, and it will go, by the end of this trial, you are going to be greater, stronger, taller, wiser, and far more full of the Holy Ghost's wisdom and fire and joy and power than when you first began this ordeal. You are an overcomer. And knowing that and seeing that in your mind, before the storm comes, during the storm is what is going to cause that joy to come right up on the inside of you because it's a knowing that I'm victorious and that is what's going to push and carry you through to victory on the other side. Until next week, God bless you and goodbye.